Well, hello there, Vlad here. Welcome to my new studio. Before I show you every detail of the new studio, I'm gonna address the question that a lot of my long-time viewers might have, uh, which is, why did I move from the studio that I really liked? I've had my home studio in our spare bedroom since we moved in here in 2016, and that studio saw multiple iterations going from basically a desk and a laptop to a proper video creation space. But as most things in life, they don't tend to stay the same and same goes for my home studio. Since the 2020 upgrade, we've added a new family member in 2021 and it became pretty clear that something had to change. My wife asked me if I could basically move the essentials of my home studio into the small room that was next to the studio that I had, and I think you should be able to see some footage from a studio tour. We basically used this space as a closet. And initially, I immediately said no, but <laughs> damn it, that woman is right about a lot of things. We measured the room and found out that you can actually fit a decent work desk here just fine. You can play guitar here without any issues, anything like that. And from there on, we came up with a plan where this space would be converted into a studio, my old studio would be converted to kind of grown-up's bedroom, and our old bedroom would be converted to kids' room. A few months later, we got the funding for the project as well, and over the last month or so, we've been working a lot to make all of this happen. So as I mentioned, this room was literally the room we used as a storage space next to my old studio. So obviously the first thing to do was to tear down everything and get rid of all of the stuff in this space. This wasn't the easiest thing to do because we kind of had just gotten used to dump all the stuff here in the closet space. Uh, it wasn't properly organized or anything like that. I think we had some boxes from the last time we moved in 2016 that were kind of we brought them from the previous apartment, just put them on a shelf and nobody touched those boxes for the next five plus years. So yeah, I think this was good for us, even though it took quite a lot of time. Once the space was cleaned, it was time to fill out all the holes in the walls and create even surfaces so we can paint the room. Without us talking about it, my wife had already planned to paint the bedroom with a color called Deep Sea Matte, which happens to be roughly the same kind of color they use in movie studios to create a sense of depth, especially in the small rooms. And as you can tell, it works. Like, I can touch the walls like this, but it doesn't feel like a tiny closet in any way. And it just looks really, really good. My wife also did an amazing job painting this room. Surfaces are nice and even, uh, though I have damaged the surfaces already a little bit while installing stuff, but that's on me, not on her. Oh, and by the way, this is how the old studio looked while we were working on the new one. I started putting the new room together by assembling a desk in there, and this one is a motorized one, so with a push of a button, it goes up and down, and that's really, really nice. Then my wife covered the desk with DC fix to give it a more darker and this kind of woodier look and I think it just looks really, really nice. Then it was time to start bringing in all the essential things, so I actually started with the display and the studio monitors to kind of get a sense of how much space everything actually takes. Before I brought in more gear, I decided to work on the acoustics of the room and brought in two of the self-made acoustic panels I had in my previous studio and put them on the ceiling, and also I decided to put one behind the desk to kill a lot of early reflections in this room. I still had one more acoustic panel left, and I decided to put that one here on this wall to kill some of the reflections happening this way. And my wife also helped a lot with the acoustic treatment by cutting out a rug here on the floor, which covers the whole floor now, and that also helps to kill a lot of the reflections happening in the room. Overall, I think this room is very different acoustically, and I'm interested to see how it will affect the mix I create here, how they translate into the real world, so to speak. It's definitely not like ISO booth level acoustic treatment, but I am noticing some new things in my mixes I haven't noticed before. So I think this space might be better and I see myself kind of upgrading it even more to make it even more dead. Maybe I need to cover some of this door here, for example, that's probably causing a lot of like, early reflections as well. I was nervous on how this room would look on camera, but as you can tell, it looks great, and I guess I'm embracing my 
in a synthwave fan or something like that with the color scheme and everything going on here. I think it looks nice. Different, but nice. And if we take a look at uh, basically like my perspective, this is what you see. You got the focal CMS 50s, got my huge screen, SM7B here, hello. Uh, yeah, this is what it looks like from my perspective. There's the ma main camera hanging out over here. There's the secondary camera traveling over there. Light one, light two. And then I got this extra screen that works with my video switcher. And the cool thing about this thing is that I can actually move it and have it, uh, let's say, over here, for example. Uh, let me zoom out a little bit so you can see more. Yeah, I can have, have it over here. I can lower it as well and stuff like that. I'm still using the Mentos. This BenQ one is just really good. Great color representation. 4K, 32 inch screen. It's huge. It's great for mixing, video editing, stuff like that. I find it really reliable color grading wise as well. If it looks good here, it looks great on a lot of other devices as well. So it works really well for that. I'm still using my Focal CMS 50s. I love these monitors. I know them really, really well, and they just work. And by the way, uh, as you can tell, the SM7B is attached to a wall mount over here. The triad orbit stuff is just fantastic. And this is literally a guitar light. And its job is to illuminate the guitar. Let me demonstrate if we will check out the main camera. Yeah, that's how it looks with the guitar light off. And this is how it looks with the guitar light on. It just makes all the difference. So, gotta have a guitar light, kids. You just have to have a guitar light. Something I did update was the laptop. Uh, I'm now using the MacBook Pro M1 14 inch one with the M1 Pro chip. And this thing is very, very different from the M1 13 inch laptop. This is just way, way more powerful. Uh, it has an HDMI board, there's an SD card reader, there's MagSafe, so the magnetic power thing that they got rid of for some reason, which I always thought was a genius thing and saved me from dropping a laptop on the floor numerous of times. And the laptop was slightly thicker, which seems to result in better ventilation and therefore better performance as well. Uh, there's no stupid uh, mini display thingy. This can run up to four external displays, I think. Whereas with the 13 inch one, it could only run two external screens and it would always, even with the lid closed, it would count the internal display as one of the displays. So basically I could run just one external display. Now I can run two. So I can also use this thing as an external display for my laptop if I need to. Overall, the performance of this laptop is way beyond that I could have even hoped for. I guess Apple came to their senses a little bit. What I also did was upgrade my audio interface uh, from the old Apollo Twin to a new Apollo Twin X. The old one was from 2011, I think, or something like that. And the main reason I ended up getting rid of it was that it was using the old Thunderbolt connection, like the really old one. So I actually needed two dongles to first convert from Thunderbolt to like USB. And then you would need to convert that USB to USB-C. And it was a hassle. And yeah, as I mentioned, something software-wise wasn't working with it as well. Just got a newer version because I'm so, so used to the universal audio workflow, all the plugins you can use, uh, live checking or for live podcasting and stuff like that. It just feels home and I never felt a need to switch. I got the Focusrite Scarlet 2 or 2 if I need to have more channels, but 99.9% .9 of the time I'm just fine with two inputs. So I also upgraded my video switch as well from Blackmagic ATEM Mini Pro to Mini Pro ISO. So in Mini Pro, you could basically, you know, live edit. I'm just hitting the cut button here. You can see how the edits happen. You could live edit the video and then you just get one file with all those kind of edits baked in, so to speak. But what kept happening was me forgetting to switch the camera and there's been a lot of kind of segments or takes lost over the past couple of years where I thought I had the right camera selected, but I didn't. And uh, that was just really, really annoying. So what the 18 Mini Pro ISO actually does, catch your name by the way, 
is recording all four camera inputs and all the audio inputs as well into separate files that you can then edit later. And you can still do all the live switching like this, but it will also save all of the files separately. And it also creates a DaVinci Resolve file, the video editing software that is that Blackmagic Design also creates and that I've used for the past two and a half years or something like that. Uh, it creates a DaVinci Resolve file with all of those edits kind of uh, recorded already. So you can check your timeline and if there's an edit you don't like, you can change it afterwards. Uh, this does result in huge files per video shoot, but it makes sure that you don't lose anything. Like if you had the wrong camera angle selected, you can change it in the post and that's bloody fantastic. It's kind of a small, but actually a really significant update for this studio. I also got myself two new lights. Uh, both are manufactured by Nanlite. They're actually two of the same lights. Uh, this thing here and the other one is over there, kind of shining uh, on the back of my head. And they're manufactured by Nanlite called PowerTube 6 to something like that. Don't remember exactly the model name. The cool thing is that they're rechargeable. You can place them on a stand or you can use the magnets they come with. And for example, that one is on the door with the magnets and I can angle it just right and it just looks really good. And as you could tell, for example, this one makes a gigantic difference. Oh, and I got a slider as well. I wanted one for a long, long time and I finally got one. It's a Rove Everyday Pro, I think, something like that. And it just adds, well, <laughs> movement to the shot. Uh, I think this footage looks really cool and I'll probably be using this for like, when I do a pedal demo or something, it's really cool to have a little bit of movement going on. It just looks really, really professional. As you can tell, I only have one guitar here in the studio. The rest of the guitars are around the apartment. And I think that's kind of nice. As of right now, my only amp solution is actually the Pod Go because I don't want to use the Uralton Junior in this room. It's hot enough here already. And using a tube amp, even with the line amp, everything it has, it's not fun. There's not enough room. I have a pedal board on the floor. It has the Pod Go and I have a bunch of pedals to go with it. But I am looking for a desktop friendly amp solution. So if you are one of the manufacturers who have something like that going on, hit me up. Let's talk. Overall, I'm incredibly happy how this turned out. I still can't believe this used to be the closet. Now it's my cool little studio where everything is always set up. I can just come in here and do videos. I want to say this time the emphasis was more on the video creation side of things. And that kind of makes sense. I don't only do like guitar videos or pedal videos. I do mixing, uh, live stream, uh, songwriting and stuff like that. And this suits it better, I want to say. It's very easy to bring in guitars or pedals in here, hook them up and I'm good to go. I also feel I got most of the stuff right here, but I reserve the right to tweak a lot of things here because depending on what kind of videos I shoot here, uh, new problems might arise every now and then. So I might be, for example, adding more of these triad orbit attachment things on the walls to be able to place stuff. Maybe have like a ceiling camera over there or something like that. That'll be a lot of fun. But yeah, overall, I'm really, really happy. Everything's set up. This room is really inspiring to walk into. And also our quality of life overall as a family will improve quite a lot because we just have so much more space there now. And I think it also just be good to go through all of my gear and realize how much stuff I own that I basically never use. And a lot of that is actually on sale right now or I have sold already. So that's good as well. But yeah, that wraps up my home studio 2022 tour. Uh, let me know what should I call this place because I might just use it from now on. Uh, is the booth a uh, rat's cage? <laughs> I was thinking of that. So like that, let me know in the comment section down below. And yeah, if you get any questions, be sure to ask those as well. Ways to support what I do in the description as well. And I'm off to enjoy my summer holiday. I shall see you in the next one or by podcast or I shall see you next time. I don't know how this works anymore. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers.